Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is indeed the light of eternal life. This Bible study is going to be on the terror of the Lord. Terror, T-E-R-R-O-R. -R -R. Oh, yeah. Now, this is mainly geared toward unbelievers, but uh, yeah, let's go take a look. Now, be not deceived about something. You know, a lot of people will not waste their time in their mind reading the Bible I mean it's sad when I used to actually go to a building that called itself a church well actually it was a state chartered business with the name church in it sanctioned under the IRS regulations so that it can be a tax-exempt business oh yeah it's a tax-exempt business under IRS regulations 501c3, 501c3, I should say. But uh, it's a creation of the state. And one of the rules to keep your tax exemption in place is that you never go against public policy. So if the state says that, well, you know, if two men love each other and want to get married, no problem. We'll issue a, a marriage license and uh, damned whatever the Bible says. But uh, that's why they generally don't preach against public policy. So, hey, got to keep that tax exemption. That's more important than what the Bible says. So, the terror of the Lord. Now, you got to realize something. When I actually did go to a so-called church building where people would gather to supposedly to worship the Lord, almost none of them could even name 10 books in the Bible. There are 66 books in my King James Bible, and they couldn't even name 10 of them. And you know if they can't even name 10 of them, They've never read them, you know? I mean, who bothers to read the Bible nowadays? Almost nobody. Now, when I came back to the Lord, 1989, first thing I did was open up the Bible to Genesis 1-1, King James. I don't want to read a Bible that's uh, whose parent company prints gay porn and the uh, satanic Bible from the Church of Satan. Yeah, I'm talking about the largest printer of Bibles in the English-speaking world called Zondervan. They're owned by HarperCollins. Yeah. And thank you to Gail Ripplinger for pointing that out. And you wonder why she gets attacked. Yeah, she gets attacked because she exposed their evil. And guess what Bible they print? As, their, as the exclusive printer. The number one best-selling NIV Bible. Oh, yeah. You know, and when you start learning this kind of stuff, uh, <laughs> your life and your view on the world totally changes. So, and there's a big difference between somebody that is a deceiver on purpose and somebody that just parrots what the deceivers teach, you know, being deceived. But if you're not willing to spend time reading God's Word, well, the Lord will be more than happy to allow you to be deceived. Matter of fact, His wrath will be upon thee, and we'll cover that later. But for those that are absolutely totally committed to the Lord, and that does not include me, by the way. You know, I've stumbled and fallen, and I've 
done a lot of do do and did a lot of things the Lord is not pleased with. But um, you know, it's a process, not an event. Coming to the Lord, in my opinion. So let's go to the first John chapter four. Oh, and by the way, you can't take my mail that somebody sends me from the post office and then read it and then say applies to the whole world. It doesn't work like that. The Bible is the book of the children of Adam covenant with Noah, Genesis 6, and confirmed in Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Israel. The Bible's not the book of the whole world. I know they want you to believe that because this way we're all the children of God and God doesn't have any enemies, but that's not what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches God has enemies and God's enemies are our enemies. Now, our enemies may not necessarily be God's enemies. Uh, believe it or not, I once sold a truck to a guy for $100. A Chevrolet C10, short bed, six cylinder, um, and the there was problems with the clutch, and he actually complained, and became my enemy, because the truck wasn't a hundred percent working, you know, a hundred dollars. I mean, you know, this was like in the late late eighties, a hundred dollars. A, a working truck. All right, so you had to get the tr cl clutch fixed. So what? You know, but he became my enemy. Now, I hope he's not God's enemy, but um, I mean, really, you know, sometimes we do things that make people hate us. And we're supposed to love them. But I'm sorry, I don't love Satan or his children. So with that in mind, 1 John chapter 4. We'll start in verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. Not the whole world. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness, in the day of judgment. Judgment, people, not wrath. Big difference. You know, God's people will have judgment. They'll get spanked. I've been spanked a number of times. So, I'll tell you a little story. Um, uh, and I'm not proud of it. I'm not bragging. But I let a girl, a married woman, seduce me. And uh, she did. You know, but I was guilty. And I played with a married woman. And not too long after that, I don't remember the time frame, but uh, I was almost killed in a motorcycle accident. I got hit on I-95. Rear-ended. <laughs> you know, wasn't my time. God was not done with me. But uh, I have a partial disability. And guess what? Every time I walk and it hurts, uh, I realize this is God's thorn in the flesh, I guess you could say, towards me. Paul was given a thorn in the flesh to remind him of things. And I'm reminded of this every day. God was not pleased, and I knew what I was doing was wrong, but, oh well, what can you do? But, uh, God reminds us, but that was judgment, not wrath. People under wrath go to the flames of hell. God will spank his people. That is judgment. 
So there's a difference between wrath and judgment. I got spanked. I got judged. But there's a difference. Had I died in that accident, that would have been wrath. So, herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. When the accuser, Satan, comes and says, oh, Bob slept with that married woman. He, well, you know. And I can say, Your Honor, I plead guilty, but the penalty was paid by your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, his blood shed on the cross. And judgment will be given, but not wrath. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love. Hmm. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear. See, we're not under terror of the Lord, if you're in the Lord. Because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. Absolutely. In John 14, 15, Jesus said, If ye love me, keep my commandments. And if you love the Son, you love the Father that sent the Son. Now, we're not talking about the sun up in the sky either. So let's beat that horse again. What, keep the commandments. What commandments? The two commandments. Matthew 22, verse uh, 35. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, a doctor of the law, Bible law, that is, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Hey, Jesus, I'm going to ask you a question here. 36. Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God. Ah. Perfect love casts out fear, right? Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And like I've said a million times, well, maybe not a million, but just maybe a quarter million. Don't have God's enemies as your neighbors. Good idea. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments, on these two commandments, hang all the law, all the law and the prophets. Don't listen to the Seventh-day Adventists that tell you, oh, you got to keep the Ten Commandments and the Sabbath. Oh, it's so important. And get circumcised and all that other. No. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Remember, perfect love casteth out fear. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 11. You know, I've actually had so-called pastors tell me not to read the Old Testament. Oh, we're not Jews. Well, that doesn't apply to us. We're, we're New Testament Christians. Yeah. Well, it may not apply to you, but it applies to me. Deuteronomy 11, verse 8. The Lord speaking to Israel. Therefore shall ye keep all the commandments which I command you this day that ye may be strong and go in and possess the land whither ye go 
to possess it. And guess what? I honestly believe that our people, when they came to the America, we were doing the exactly this thing. Taking the land from the heathen and the Lord giving it unto his people. Of course, 200 years ago, uh, people actually believed the Bible, unlike today. Therefore shall ye keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that ye may be strong and go in and possess the land, whither ye go to possess it, and that ye may prolong your days in the land, which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give unto them and to their seed, their children, a land that floweth with milk and honey. For the land whither thou goest in to possess it is not as the land of Egypt from whence ye came out, where thou sowest thy seed and waterest it with thy foot as a garden of herbs. But the land whither thou go to possess it is a land of hills and valleys and drinketh water of the rain of heaven. A land which the Lord thy God careth for, for the eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. Ah, here's the punchline. And it shall come to pass if, capital I-F, if ye shall hearken, listen, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God. Does that sound like Jesus changed the law? I don't think so. To love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. Hmm. That I will give you the rain of your land in his due season. Uh, you know what happens when we have drought? The Bible says that drought is a wake-up call from the Lord. I'm paraphrasing. That's the Bob translation paraphrase. Drought is a wake-up call from the Lord that something is wrong. That I will give you the rain of your land in his due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. And I will send grass in thy fields for thy cattle that thou mayest eat and be full. And then our buddies over in Davos, the W and take an E and then take an F, they don't want us to have cattle. They want you to eat bugs. And I'm not talking about bugs money either. Nah. What's up, Doc? I don't think so. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived. Didn't we just talk about that? Yes. Take heed. Pay attention. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived. And ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. You could say, well, you know, idols, whatever, you know, American Idol, Dancing with the Idols, I mean stars. Um, yeah. Be it money, sex, fame, uh, the devil. Yeah, you know, like the uh, number one selling so-called Bible, the NIV Bible, for at least a couple of years running, printed by the, the company, parent company of the Church of Satan Bible. Yeah. Yeah, people, there are actually people that worship the devil, his children. So take heed to yourselves and that your heart be not deceived and you turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath, his terror, 
And then the Lord's wrath will be kindled against you. You know what it means to kindle? Oh, well, it's not Amazon's little digital book reader. When you kindle a fire, you start a fire. It's funny how the King James uses words that have perfect meanings. And then the Lord's wrath will be kindled against you. The flame of fire. And he shut up the heaven that there be no rain. People, drought is a wake-up call from the Lord. And that the land yield not her fruit. No food. And lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. All right, verse 18. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul and bind them for a sign between your hand that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. And by the way, a frontlet is a, uh, it's kind of like a band that you wear in your, around your forehead. So, Verse 19, and ye shall teach them your children. That's right. Parents were commanded the Lord to teach their children and their, ch grand and their children's children. That is why we've lost knowledge of who we are. That is exactly why. Because the parents didn't believe they didn't teach the children. And by the time you get to the third and fourth generation of sin, because people don't believe, they don't know what's going on, God sends his judgment against his people, which is what is happening today. God's judgment is upon the church. I think it's Peter that writes that judgment begins at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel? I think I'm paraphrasing there, but you get the general idea, right? And ye shall teach them your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So when you're sitting down, when you're walking, when you're lying down, when you're Get out of bed. You should be talking to your children about the Lord. And thou shalt write them upon the doorposts of thine house and upon thy gates, that your days may be multiplied and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them as the days of heaven upon the earth. Not the whole world. Not the whole world. Verse 23. Oh, 22. And if, if ye shall diligently keep all the commandments which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him, then will the Lord drive out all these nations from before you. God will drive out the enemy. And ye shall possess greater nations and mightier than yourselves. Every place wherein, whereon the soles of your feet shall tread shall be yours from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river of the river Euphrates, even unto the uttermost sea shall your coast be. There shall no man be able to stand before you, for the Lord your God shall lay the fear of you, the fear of you and the dread of you upon all the land that ye shall tread upon as he hath said unto you. When God's people love the Lord, obey him, and do the things that he wants them to do, and love him, God will be a terror to the enemy. But now we open the gates up and say to the enemy, come on in, we'll give you a place to live, we'll feed you, and we'll give you a welfare check every month. Universal basic income, UBI, oh yeah. Come on in. Come on in so you can curse the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to bless you for doing it. 
Yeah. How's that working out for you? It's not. But guess what? Things are just warming up. It hasn't come to a boil yet. Yeah. Verse 26. Behold, I set before you this day a blessing and a curse. You want the blessing? No, we don't want the blessing. We want the curse. Because that's where we are today. In the USSA, in the UK, in the European Union. We want the curse. A blessing if ye obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day. And a curse. If ye will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to go after other gods which ye have not known. And it shall come to pass when the Lord thy God hath brought thee in unto the land whither thou goest to possess it, that thou shalt put the blessing upon Mount Gizram and the curse upon Mount Ebal. Hmm. Are they not on the other side, Jordan, by the way, where the sun goeth down in the land of the Canaanites? And by the way, if you don't know why God said he would destroy the Canaanites, and if you think it's just because they did human sacrifice, well, you're partly right, but you're partly wrong. The Canaanites were not of God's planting. Read the parable of the wheat and the tares. I did a Bible study on it, which people don't want to bother with for the most part. In the land of the Canaanites, which dwell in the campaign over against Gilgal, beside the plains of Morah, for ye shall pass over Jordan to go in and to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you, and ye shall possess it and dwell therein, and ye shall observe to do all the statutes and judgments which I set before you this day. You know what the statutes and judgments said? It tells you what to do with men who want to be with men. And it's not to give them a marriage license. And what to do with those that love and worship Satan. It tells you what to do. But no, we're not going to do that. After all, God loves everybody, right? That's not what my Bible says. Maybe the NIV Bible says that. I don't know. But uh, my King James doesn't says does not say that God loves everybody. Matter of fact, in Malachi chapter 1, it says he hated Esau. My Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Bible says, I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. God doesn't change his mind. Oh, the Old Testament, that was that cruel, evil Old Testament God. But now we got Jesus, who's different. No. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. And he's a God of wrath upon the children of disobedience. As they will one day discover to their fear and terror you know what disobedience means it means somebody that doesn't obey so let's take a look oh you know what they hate paul here's one reason colossians uh colossians was a city in greece colossi the colossians were those that dwelt in colossi Colossians 3, 6, For which things sake the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. Ephesians 5, 6, Ephesus, a children in, uh, I mean, a city in Greece. 
Ephesians were the residents of that city. You know, it's like Floridians live in Florida and New Yorkers live in New York. Texans live in Texas. Ephesians lived in Ephesus. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God, the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Hmm. Ephesians 2.2, 2, wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. That's talking about me. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Oh, yeah. Let's go to the book of Proverbs. Boy, I tell you what, you want to talk about wrath? Go to Proverbs chapter 1. We'll start in verse 23. Turn you at my reproof. What is reproof? Uh, judgment, getting spanked, you know. Uh, I turned at the Lord's re uh, reproof. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. Did you know in the book of Acts, I think it's Acts chapter 2, God poured out his spirit upon his people? I will pour out my spirit unto you, and I will make known my words unto you. But then, here's a different, you know, that's talking to the believers. Well, now let's, God's get ready to talk to the unbelievers. Because, verse 24, because I have called, I called you people, and you refused. Hmm, you ever get a telephone call, and you got caller ID, and you say, oh, somebody's calling me, and you look, and you, I don't want to talk to that person. Well, that's the modern way of looking at it. Because I have called, and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand. And no man regarded. But ye have said it not. It means nothing. But ye have said it not all my counsel, and would none of my reproof. In other words, the things that I said to you, you wouldn't listen. I spanked you and you didn't care. You just went and did it again. So what's God going to do? Verse 26. I also will laugh at your calamity. What? But God's a God of love. Yeah, he's going to, when their destruction comes, he's going to laugh at them. You didn't want me then. Why do you want me now? I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation. What is desolation? It means total destruction. You go to a desert where there's nothing out there but sand. That's a desolation. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. Your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. What does that remind you of? A cyclone? A hurricane? A tornado? Boy, I'll tell you what, you ever been in a tornado? You know what destruction comes as a whirlwind. Oh, yeah. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come up, cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me. But I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge. They hated God's knowledge, and they did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. From the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools 
prosperity of fools shall destroy them. You ever meet people that all they cared about was money? I have. It's all they care about. I once heard a saying, not sure I agree 100%, but they said a good person will love people and use money, but a greedy bad person will love money and use people. They would steal the last dollar from their own mother. I've met people like that. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whosoever hearkeneth, whoever listens, but whosoever hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely, and shall be quiet from fear of evil. Oh, yeah. You know, people, when you want the things of the Lord more than anything else in this world, and you seek the Lord more than anything else in this world, he will find you. But when you want the things of this world, and you want to spend all your time watching television, and you don't bother to read the Bible because, you know, it's just not worth your time, well, the Lord will give you what you want in this world. Oh, yeah. Ezekiel chapter 14. Boy, you don't hear this stuff in a church. See, I preach this. Well, not preach, but I teach the things that are not taught in your corporate 501c3 businesses masquerading as a church. See, the church is where two or three of God's people gather together. God's people are the church. The church is in a building that you go to on a Sunday. S-U-N day, not S-O-N day. Every day is the day of the Son of God, whose name is Jesus, who is the Christ. Ezekiel chapter 14. Now you got to realize something. Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, these are called the major prophets, along with Daniel. And they were generally written by God's people getting judgment. They're getting spanked. Oh, yeah. So, Ezekiel was a prophet. This is a wild book, let me tell you. Ezekiel's a wild, wild book. Ezekiel 14, verse 1. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. Here it is, the leader sitting before God's prophet. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart. Mm. They have idols in their heart. They haven't set up the Lord in their heart. And they have set up idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity. What's iniquity? Wickedness and sin. It's a stumbling block. You know, like a, a concrete block on a sidewalk and you're not paying attention. You're on your phone. And you trip and fall and stumble, right? Stumbling block. And put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Hey, uh, prophet, these people are evil. Why should I answer them when they don't want to listen to me at all? Think about it. That's kind of like the modern translation, I guess you could say. Verse 4. Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that set up, up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. 
You want to cheat people out of their every penny you can? God will let you. God will let you do it. You want to have the things of this world? God will give you the things of this world. And that's scary, people. Read the story, not parable, the story of the rich man and Lazarus. Lazarus was poor, and he ate the crumbs that ate from the rich man's table. But when it came judgment time, Lazarus was with Abraham in his bosom, and the rich man was in the flames of fire. Yeah. Yeah. Think about it. The rich man wanted to be rich. Lazarus was a totally different story. Ate from the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. You think the rich man would have set a place for Lazarus saying, Oh, Lazarus, you've, you know, I'm sorry about the bad things that have happened to you in life here. Let me take care of you. No. Only fed from the crumbs that fell from from the rich man's table. See, rich people don't care. That's why God said it was easier for a uh, for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to go to heaven. Because their idol is money. They don't care about the people. So God gives them what they want in this world. But when it comes hell to pay, don't come crying to me. You wanted money, I gave you money. The things you wanted, I gave them to you. Don't come crying to me now. Well, at least that's what I would probably tell them, but you know. I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Estranged. What does that mean? Separated. You ever heard of a, a husband and wife were estranged from each other? They were separated from each other. They were not of one flesh anymore. You can't be joined to idols and joined to the Lord. Pick one or the other. The mark of the beast is coming, people. And it will be voluntary. You will choose. Take the mark of the beast, get fed, have the things of this world, or refuse it and possibly die for the faith. You know, the gift of eternal life, there is no greater gift in this world that God can give you in not only this world, but in the world to come. There is no greater gift that God can give you than the gift of eternal life. And will you throw it away for a mouthful of food? A bowl of beans like Esau did? Will you? That I may take the house of Israel in their own heart. Where's your heart? Is your heart loving money or is your heart loving the Lord? Because they are all estranged from, from me through their idols. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent. You know, re Jesus said repent a lot. John the Baptist taught repent. Boy, that's a dirty word nowadays. Telling people to turn away from their sins. Matter of fact, there's people who tell you repent doesn't even mean that anymore. Repent and turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. What does it mean, turn your face away from your abominations? Quit looking, quit seeking for your abominations. Turn away from it. For every one of the house of Israel or the stranger that sojourneth in Israel, which separateth himself from me, they separate themselves from the Lord and setteth up 
his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to a prophet to inquire of him concerning me, I, the Lord, will answer him by myself. And I will set my face against that man. The Lord says he'll set his face against that man and will make him a sign and a proverb. Guess what is another sign and proverb? The flood of Noah. Sodom and Gomorrah being turned into ashes. That's a sign and a proverb. And I will cut him off. Cut him off from the midst of my people. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. And if the prophet be deceived, when he hath spoken a thing, I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet. You want to see deceived prophets? Turn on TBN. I, the Lord, have deceived that prophet, and I will stretch out my hand upon him and will destroy him from the midst of my people Israel. And they shall bear the punishment of their iniquity. The punishment of the prophet shall be even as the punishment of him that seeketh him, that the house of Israel may go no more astray from me, neither be polluted, neither be polluted anymore with all their transgressions, but that they may be my people and I may be their God, saith the Lord God. Wow. And when you read, keep reading this chapter. God says he will send noisome beasts to pass through the land. Noisome beasts. Go drive through a major city. Preferably MLK Boulevard. Where you can hear rappers. Is that noisome beasts? I don't know. Verse 17, or if I bring a sword upon the land, war. Or if I send a pestilence, disease. Wow. Think about it, people. Those are God's judgments upon a wicked nation. Paul writes to the Galatians, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. You sow corruption, you're going to reap corruption. You plant the seeds of destruction and evil and wickedness, that's what your harvest is going to be. Revelation 19.20. Boy, this is a tough one. And the beast was taken. And with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him. You know what? There's false prophet is going to be able to do miracles. People are going to be deceived. Especially they that don't bother to read the Bible. And with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. Wow. Now, if you go to the second channel, or I'm sorry, Second, cha uh, second book of Chronicles, Chronicles of the Kings of Israel and Judah, Second Chronicles chapter 18, there was a good king of Judah named Jehoshaphat, and he was asked by the wicked king of Israel called Ahab, uh, God did not like Ahab. Ahab did a lot of things to... Uh, I guess you could say P.O. God. Uh, I'm 
using a modern, you know. But let's just say Ahab did a lot of things to make the Lord angry. I mean, a lot of things. How about everything? Ahab was a Satan worshiper and murderer and uh, everything in between. And his wife was even worse, if that's possible. So this wicked king asked the good king of Judah, the wicked king of Israel asked the good king of Judah, and oh, by the way, haven't you ever heard, oh, Judah and Israel, they're the same. Uh, no, they're not. No, they're not. Judah was part of Israel, but Judah had a king and an area and a capital called Jerusalem. Israel had a different king, a different land area, and a capital called Samaria. And they fought against each other at different time periods in history. How can they be the same? They're not. It's just your deceiving church world so-called pastors deceiving you. They're not the same. Oh, by the way, don't read that Old Testament. That's for the Jews, and that's not for uh, us. We're New Testament Christians, so don't read it. Because if you read the Bible from cover to cover, you'd know they're a bunch of liars. But me, I, uh, I fear the Lord, and I'm afraid to lie to you because I know what the Lord does to liars who preach in his name, or teach in his name, and deceivers. They're going to get a, um, let's just say they're going to get a very, very, very hot bath. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and a lake of fire. So here it is, this wicked king asks the good king, Hey, dude, uh, I'm, uh, I'm having problems here, and I'm at war with these people. Uh, can you help me out, buddy boy? And the good king says, uh, Certainly. So I'll, I'll help you. I'll be happy to help you out here. Well, the thing is, the Lord was sending judgment against Ahab, and the good king is wanting to help this wicked Satanist uh, fight against God's judgment. Like I say, read Second Chronicles chapter 18. You know? I mean, they're, they're evil. So, but when you read chapter 19, the good king's going home to Jerusalem and a prophet comes and meets him. And oh, by the way, if you don't know what a, uh, before they were called prophets, they were called seers, S-E-E-R, a seer, because they could see the future because the Lord had showed them. So let's read Second Chronicles in chapter 19, verse 1. And Jehoshaphat, the good king, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace in Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, the prophet, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Hey, uh, King Jehoshaphat, shouldest thou help the ungodly? Should you help the ungodly? And love them that hate the Lord? Good question. Should we, uh, hate, should we help those that hate the Lord, Jesus Christ? Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord. Wow. You want to help those that hate the Lord? You can have the Lord's wrath upon you. I pass. I'm not going to pray for those that curse, hate, and despise Jesus Christ. Not me. I'll let those uh, Zionist churches do that. Oh, yeah. So, 
Is that what you want? Not me. All right, let's go to Proverbs chapter 1. Do you know that God's wrath is upon those, even though their King Jehoshaphat was good, for the most part, in God's eyes, but he made your screw up. He was helping those that hated the Lord. And God was not pleased. Does your church bless those that hate Jesus? Think about it. Proverbs chapter 1. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. And by the way, in the days of Solomon's son, that's when Israel and Judah became divided, separated. They split. They said, man, the taxes are too high. We're out of here, buddy boy. That's basically what happened with the U.S. against England. We got tired of paying uh, tribute and taxes to the bankers, the Bank of England. We got tired of it. So we kicked the limeys out of our country. Get out of here. We're sick of looking at you. We don't want a king but Jesus. Boy, that changed fast. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. What kind of wisdom? Godly wisdom. Godly instruction. Godly understanding. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give subtly to the simple, to the young men knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall obtain unto wise counsels. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Wow. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. There's another Bible verse that says, The fool has said in his heart, There is no God. Uh, April 1st is uh, National Atheist Day, if you ask me. But that's the beginning of knowledge. Once you have knowledge of the Lord and you love the Lord, remember there's no, there's no fear in love, in perfect love. There's no fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The fool have said in his heart, there is no God, right? Verse 8. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. For they shall be an ornament of grace. Well, grace? Why, oh, uh, I thought grace was only in the New Testament. No. You can find grace in the Old Testament. Genesis 6, it says that Noah found grace in the sight of God. Noah found grace. See, we've been deceived. We've been lied to. And I didn't know how much until I started reading the Bible for myself. Hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. Gold chains, not slavery chains, people. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. The married woman tries to seduce you, run away. Wish I'd have listened to that. I'd probably walk a lot better, but oh well. Verse 11, if they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Hey, we're going to rob these people. And we're going to kill them and take everything they have. 
If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole, as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Oh yeah, we're going to fill our houses with gold and jewels from those we murdered. 14. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. Yeah, we're going to all throw the money into a pot and divide it equally. Verse 15. My son, walk thou not in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they that lay wait for their own blood, they lurk privily for their own lives. See, they think they're laying a trap for others, but really, they're laying a trap for themselves that the Lord is setting. 19. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. You want to kill people and steal their stuff? Ooh. Verse 20. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. In the openings of the gates, in the city, she uttereth her word, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. What kind of knowledge? Knowledge of the Lord. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Ah, we read this before, huh? Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have said it not all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and your desolation cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me early, but they shall not find me. For they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would none of my counsel, they despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. And the prosperity of fools, prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and be quiet from fear of evil. Proverbs 1, people. Boy, that's scary stuff. And I was there for many years. Many years. All right, let's start in the terror of the Lord. I think I've laid a, uh, a suitable foundation for what is now coming. Remember, people, I'm on Odyssey. And I'm posting things on Odyssey that I dare not post on you-know-who tube. Uh, yeah. So... Let's go to Genesis 35. Now, remember... Jacob had his name changed to Israel, which means rules with God or prince of God. And like I said, God made his covenant with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And Jacob's brother was Esau. And God said he hated Esau. Yeah. God doesn't love everybody. And everybody doesn't love God. God has enemies. I think it was Revelation 12. God said that uh, uh, the Lord says there was war in heaven. You ever heard the expression, make love, not war? Well, Satan did not love the Lord. Satan tried to kill him. That's what happens in a war. You try to kill people and take over. God has enemies. 
and God's enemies are my enemy. Enemies. I hope they're yours too. All this love your enemy stuff, that's for our personal enemies. I don't love Satanists. I don't love Luciferians. I don't love them. I hate them. So did King David. King David said, Do not I hate them that hate thee, O Lord. I count them mine enemies. And the Lord said that King David was a man after God's own heart. Genesis 35. First appearance of terror in the Bible. And God said unto Jacob, Arise, go up to Bethel. You know what Beth means? Beth means house. El has reference to God. So it basically means house of God, Bethel. Arise, go up to Bethel and dwell there, and I will make there an altar unto God that appeared unto thee when thou fleddest from the face of Esau thy brother. Esau tried to kill Jacob. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, Put away the strange gods, your idols, that are among you, and be clean and change your garments. Take a bath and put on some new clothes. People, this is pointing to where John the Baptist baptized people in the river Jordan. It was symbolic of the washing away of your sins and coming up a new clean creature, which is a pointing to, in the book of Revelation, where those that are washed in the blood of Christ have white robes given unto them, the wedding garments for the marriage supper of the Lamb. And pastors will tell you, oh, don't read the Old Testament. That was for the Jews. Oh, we're New Testament Christians. That's not for us. Tell them to go to hell. Deceiver. They have to be deceivers. The Spirit of God is not in them. Put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean and change your garments and let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make there an altar unto God who answereth who answered me in the day of my distress. People, when we're in distress, we want to pray the Lord and have our hearts right with him so that he'll answer our prayers. And I will make thee an altar unto God who answered me in the day of my distress and was with me in the way which I want. And they gave unto Jacob all the strange gods which were in their hand and all their earrings which were in their ears, and Jacob hid them under the oak, which was by Shechem. You know what? I just I just saw this. Do you know that witches consider oaks sacred? Huh. Isn't that funny how he took the idols that they called gods, and Jacob hid them under the oak, which was by Shechem. Huh. And by the way, they make their magic wands out of holly wood. Hollywood? Oh, yeah. Harry Potter, anybody? Came from where? Hollywood. Hmm. All right, so he took all of the idols, the false gods, and hit them under an oak, which was by Shechem. Verse 5. And they journeyed, and the terror of God, the terror of God, was upon the cities that were round about them. Oh yeah, the Canaanite cities. God's terror was upon them. And they did not pursue after the sons of Jacob. They were scared. So Jacob came to Luz, which is in the land of Canaan, that is Bethel, he and all the people that were with him. And he built there an altar and called the place El Bethel, God, house of God, because there God appeared unto him when he fled from the face of his brother. 
But Deborah, Rebecca's nurse, died, and she was buried under uh, beneath Bethel under an oak, and the name of it was called Alan Bakchuth, something like that. And God appeared unto Jacob again when he came out of Padanaram and blessed him. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. All the devil's kids say, the world's overpopulated. We got to get rid of them. Let's have abortions and birth control. And Vaz, a nations. Yeah. I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee. And kings shall come out of thy loins. Are the Jews a nation and company of nations? Show me all the Jewish kings. Where are they? Where are they? Who's a nation and company of nations? Not them. They do not fulfill the promises that God made to Israel. Mark Twain even said he didn't believe the Bible because... He said, God did not fulfill the promises that he made to the Jews. Well, problem was, he was looking in the wrong place. Yeah, he was looking in the wrong place. God said, In the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac to thee, I will give it, and to thy seed, children, and to thy seed after thee will I give the land. And God went up from him in the place where he talked with him, and Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he talked with him, even a pillar of stone, and he poured a drink offering thereon, and he poured oil thereon. And Jacob called the name of the place where God spake with him, Bethel. You want to read something? Read Leviticus chapter 26. I could make this four or five hour study if I really wanted to. But God, remember we read about the blessings and the curse? Well, here you go. I've already done a Bible study on Leviticus 26. God said he would bless you if you did what he said, and he would curse you if you didn't. Well, guess what? We are in the curse phase now. We're being cursed. Oh, yeah. Matter of fact, let me see here. Ah, let's read it again. Leviticus 26, verse 1. Ye shall make you no idols, nor grave an image, nor rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. Now remember, in the end times, I think it's Revelation 13, there's going to be an image of the beast, and people are going to worship the image of the beast. God says, don't do it. Don't do it. Verse 2. Ye shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Now, this is the Old Covenant. The New Covenant is the Two Commandments. Love the Lord, love thy neighbor. On these two things hang all the, all the law and the prophets. Nothing wrong with keeping a day for the Lord. You know, it's a good thing to have a day where you love the Lord and uh, study his word and his wills. Matter of fact, uh, when I wasn't working, I, that's what I would do on the Sabbath day. I would do Bible studies. Am I breaking the Sabbath by doing a Bible study? I don't think so, but you know, some people would say I am. I mean, the you-know-whos would 
condemn Jesus for healing on the Sabbath? Yeah. All right, Leviticus 26, verse 3. If, if ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, you know, if you're going to do what I say, well, hey, don't children always do what their parents tell you? When God the Father tells his children to do something, it's for their benefit. Hey, little Johnny, look both ways before you cross that street. There might be a car coming. Now, we don't want to see you uh, flat as a pancake. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them. And oh, by the way, people, Satan will tell you, oh, don't listen to God. He's holding you down. He's holding you back. You know, if it feels good, do it. God's, you know, he's, he's hiding things from you. That was uh, basically what he told Eve in the garden. And no, I don't believe in talking snakes. Revelation 12 tells you what the old serpent was called the devil and Satan. Oh yeah. If you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then will, then I will give you rain in due season and the land shall yield her increase and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. And your threshing shall reach unto the vintage, and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time, and ye shall eat your bread to the full and dwell in your land safely. In other words, before you run out of last year's harvest, you're going to have this year's harvest. And the enemy is not going to fight you in your land because you're going to dwell in your land. You're going to live in your land safely. Verse 6, And I will give you peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land. What is an evil beast? Are lions and tigers evil beasts? No. They kill to eat. They're not evil. Personally, I think it's talking about two-legged beasts. But, uh, hey, what do I know, right? And if you don't know, uh, in Jonah chapter 1, I think it's Jonah chapter 1, uh, the Bible talks about, uh, well, let's take a look. All right, in the book of Jonah chapter 3, I was wrong. Uh, Jonah, a prophet of the Lord, goes to Nineveh, capital of Assyria, a wicked people. Their god was called Dagon. Dagon was basically a mer merman. You want to see what a merman looks like? Uh, look at, uh, what was her, Ariel's father and the little mermaid? Look at her father. That's a merman. Mermaids, merman, you know, from the waist down, they're a fish. From the waist up, they're a uh, human. That was their god. Why does Disney do movies and cartoons about this kind of stuff because that's who their father is all right god told well let's go to let's read the whole let's read jonah chapter three verse one and the word of the lord came into jonah the second time saying arise go to nineveh that great city and preach unto it preach unto it the preaching that i bid thee so jonah arose and went Unto Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Uh, where do we read about forty days and forty nights? Oh, that's right. Uh, Noah. Yeah. Noah and the flood, right? Verse 5, so the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast. They quit eating. They afflicted their bodies and put on sackcloth. They didn't have, sackcloth was not comfortable clothing. So they, they fasted 
and they put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them even unto the least of them. For the word came unto the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, and laid his robe from him, and covered him with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Boy, I tell you what, if America would do this, repentance, fasting, prayer, and sackcloth and ashes, revival and blessing would come, but America's not going to do that. Verse 7, And he, the king of Nineveh, caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his noble, saying, Let neither man nor beast, beast, herd nor flock, taste anything, let them not feed nor drink water. Listen carefully. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily unto God, Yea, let them turn every one from his evil way and from the violence that is in their hands. Did you catch that? But let man and beast, four-legged or two-legged, beast be covered with sackcloth. What animal is covered with sackcloth? None. What beast cries mightily unto God? Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way. Do cows have to turn from their evil way? Do dogs? And from the violence that is in their hands. What kind of beast is covered with sackcloth, cries mightily to God, turn, turn from their evil way and violence that is in their hands? What beast has hands? Gorillas? Think about it. Who can tell if God will turn and repent, turn away from his fierce anger, that we perish not? What kind of beast is there? Leviticus 26, verse 6. And I will give peace in the land, and ye shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land, neither shall the sword go through your land. Now, this is if we're obedient. And ye shall chase your enemies, and they shall fall before you by the sword. See, God's enemies are our enemies. Verse 8. And five of you shall chase an hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. And I always wondered... Why did Germany lose World War I and World War II if they were doing God's will? Verse 9. For I will have respect unto you and make you fruitful and multiply you and establish my covenant with you. And ye shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new. And I will set my tabernacle among you and my soul shall not abhor you. What does abhor mean? It means to hate. And I will walk among you and will be your God and ye shall be my people. Didn't that happen in the days of Christ? He walked among us. He was our God and we were to be his people. I am the Lord your God which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt that ye should not be their bondmen, their slaves. And I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go upright. Oh boy, here we go. But if, if ye will not hearken, if you will not listen, but if you will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments, and if ye shall despise my statutes, or if your soul abhor or hate my judgments, so that ye will not do all my commandments, but that ye break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror. Terror. Consumption. What is consumption? I think it's cancer. You get eaten up from the inside. And the burning ague that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart 
and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemy shall eat it. You plant your vineyards, but then the enemy comes and overflows the land, and all that hard work you put in, you fed your enemies. According to Webster's 1828 dictionary, ague is a noun, it's a cold, uh, where you get cold before you become, uh, have a fever, uh, was shivering. You ever been sick where you were cold and then you were hot and then you were cold and then hot? That's what it is. Doesn't sound very good. Verse 17. When you're disobedient, listen to this. And I will set my face against you and ye shall be slain before your enemies. They that hate you shall reign over you and ye shall flee when none pursueth you. Isn't that what's happening now? Those that hate us are ruling us. 18. And if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins, and I will break the pride of your power. And I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. And your strength shall be spent in vain. For your land shall not yield or increase. Your crops will not, you're not, they're, you're not going to get any crops. Neither shall the trees of the lands yield their fruits. And if you walk contrary unto me, and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. I will also send wild beasts among you, which shall rob you of your children and destroy your cattle and make you few in number and your highways shall be desolate. Do we have wild beasts that are robbing us of our children? Destroying our livestock? Making us few in number? And if you will not be reformed by me by these things, but will walk contrary unto me, then will I also walk contrary unto you and will punish you yet seven times for your sins. And I will bring a sword upon you, war, that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when you are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence, disease, among you, and ye shall be delivered in the hands of the enemy. And when I have broken the staff of your bread, no more food, Ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and they shall deliver you your bread again by weight, and you shall eat it and not be satisfied. You're going to eat your bread, but you're going to be hungry still. And if you will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, then I will walk contrary all unto you also in fury. And I, even I, will chastise you seven times for your sins. And ye shall eat the flesh of your sons, and the flesh of your daughters shall ye eat. People, I have heard that the abortion clinics sell these their products to food companies. I don't know how true that is, but some of the stuff that I've heard makes me believe it. I could be wrong, but... I bet you this is coming true now. Verse 30. And I will destroy your high places and cut down your images and cast your carcasses upon the carcasses of your idols. And my soul, the Lord, and my soul shall abhor or hate you. And I will make your cities waste and bring your sanctuaries unto desolation. And I will not smell the Savior of your sweet odors. You want to burn incense unto the Lord and unto the devils? Lord ain't going to smell it. And I will bring the land into desolation, and your enemies which dwell in shall be astonished at it. And I will scatter you among the heathen. I will scatter you among the heathen. That's what's happening now. And will draw, draw out a sword after you. War. And your land shall be desolate, your cities waste. Then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths, as long as it lieth desolate. And ye shall be in your enemy's land, even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbaths. 
As long as it lieth desolate, it shall rest, because it did not rest in your Sabbaths, wherein ye dwelt upon it. And upon them that are left alive of you, I will send a faintness into their hearts, in the lands of their enemies, and the sound of a shaken leaf shall chase them. And they shall flee as fleeing from the sword, and they shall fall when none pursueth them, uh, when none pursueth. Can you imagine being afraid of just a shaking leaf? Yeah, 37. And they shall fall one upon another, as it were before a sword, and none pursueth, and ye shall have no power to stand before your enemies, and ye shall perish. Ye shall perish among the heathen, and the land of your enemies shall eat you up. And they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in your enemy's land. And also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. But here is the remedy. Verse 40. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespasses, which they trespass against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept of their punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham, will I remember, and I will remember the land. The land also shall be left to them, and shall enjoy her Sabbath, while she lieth desolate without them, and they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity, because even because they despise my judgments, and because their soul abhorred my statutes. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly, not completely, not totally, and to break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. These are the statutes and judgments and law which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel, Mount Sinai, by the hand of Moses. Oh yeah, people. God wants us to honor him. And we don't honor him when we spend our time watching Hollywood movies. You know, if the you-know-whos that control Hollywood really were God's chosen people, they would do movies about Samson in the Bible instead of movies about Hercules, which, according to mythology, Hercules was the son of a woman who got pregnant by one of the gods. I forget who. Was it Zeus? I forget. Yeah, but you get the idea. Genesis chapter 6. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that, that Genesis chapter 6. You know, where they want you to believe that godly men married ungodly women... Believing men married unbelieving women and they had giants for children. And then God destroyed the world in a flood. Uh, and if you believe that, well, you haven't studied the word. Which I like to think that I have. I've devoted thousands of hours of study. So, not that I'm bragging, but, you know, I turned off the TV. I've, I've had people, uh, there's been studies that people watch about 30 hours a, a week of television. 30 hours a week, if not more. Imagine if you spent 30 hours a week studying the Bible. Yeah. You know, that's about 1,500 hours a year of Bible studies. How much knowledge would you gain? A lot. Times, oh, I don't know, 10 years? Yeah. No, let's watch television. Dancing with the Idols is on. 
Yeah, let's dance with the idols. I mean, American Idol, Dancing with the Stars, whatever. You know, America's Funniest Videos. Um, hey, the Stuper Bowl's on. The World Series. Basketball. Yeah. You want to see a bunch of grown men playing with balls. Think the Lord's happy? No. Uh, and I haven't even, I haven't even, uh, I haven't even started hardly yet. I'm only about halfway done. So I guess this is going to be terror part one. And, uh, I haven't even gotten to the New Testament. I haven't even gotten to the, the Old Testament hardly. Wow. So, you know, people, it's, it's sad. I, I have watched the country go down the toilet so fast. But compared to when I was a kid, this is just total wickedness. The Lord's not going to put up with this. He's going to let evil get worse and worse and worse. And then when things crash, the Lord's going to allow Satan to send a savior, the beast, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the antichrist. And all true believers are going to have to make a choice. Follow the Lord, possibly lose your life, or follow Satan. We're all going to have to make a choice. And God's not going to give people eternal life just because they said some stupid little sinner's prayer for 30 seconds at a Billy Goat Graham revival, so-called. You know, there hasn't been a revival in this country in decades. When there's a revival... The liquor stores will go out of business. The movie sh 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 the movie theaters will go out of business. Sports venues will be empty. But that ain't that is not happening. That is not happening. I grieve over what the western world has become. I grieve. Abortion clinics should close. Preachers should be preaching righteousness instead of on TBN about how to be rich. What well, God wants you to be rich. God wants us to be rich in faith first. And then he'll bless us materially. But right now we're under God's curse. And it's just starting, people. You know, people don't want to hear these kind of messages. I don't like them either. When I read the book of Jeremiah, I, I get depressed. Because I see the same things then as I do now. God hasn't changed. I am the Lord. I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. The Lord doesn't change. The Lord doesn't change. All right, so this is part one, and I hope that uh, I'm preaching what, teaching what the Lord wants. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.